supposed to be a combining corn morning. And as you can see, the rain has just started. It wasn't supposed to rain until tomorrow. So I think demos for today are done. I'm still gonna carry out to the customer's place here and get the, the head put on. We had it in uh, Wyoming, and then it was about an hour and a half-ish drive back to the customers. So we, uh, we put them on a header cart just so that we don't hurt the tracks at all with the weight of the 12 row. So, um, so yeah, so I'm just gonna head over there, make sure that everything's put on and ready to go. Possibly tomorrow, if we don't get too much rain here, we might be able to run tomorrow morning instead. So at least have everything sent ready. And then uh, it's gonna be an office day, I think, here's what's gonna happen. So that's uh, that's where we're at right at this moment. So we'll see. Well, we got it on. I, uh, we brought it down with this little header cart here. Combine's on. Um, pretty simple to put these on machine. Pick it up with a face plate, uh, PTO, single point. Gehringhoff has another cable right here. This runs the uh, monitor in the in the cab for the deck plate position and uh, the rotor speeds. And then the other cable right here, this little Deutsch plug, that is for the auto steer. So it has a set of sensors up on the front that. Uh, feels both sides of the cornrows in here so it it runs down the center of the row and feels both sides and as it moves that tells the machine to steer so on previous units that I've done um, that's been very integrated uh, you plug it in and it goes um, this one here it's got a separate control box that runs ISO up into the display and uh, we, we use uh, the ISO function on there to be able to set it up and control it. So that's all calibrated and ready to go. Um, due to the rain um, and the fact that this is a new head, typically what I do um, is I always take these off. Uh, I just find that they gather a lot of uh, stock coming up the snouts and if there's any down stuff, you might as well take them off right away. So anybody running a, a gearing off head and down corn, take these off. And if you're running in conditions like what uh, Brian's Farm videos are, um, I would take these off as well because it allows the crop to get up over the snout and let the gathering rolls and the chains be able to grab onto everything. The other thing I would be doing is if you have an MS Horizon head, which is the chopping version like this with the lawnmower blades, if you've got down corn, turn them off those rolls have to be able to grab onto something and as soon as you cut it there's no grounding of that plant down to the ground and uh, you're going to end up having troubles getting it to, to feed through so um, just a couple of things that i've run into over the last few years doing uh, down corn with these heads they work really well if you get them set up properly so so yeah so i'm going to run all these uh these black um cob saver things off right now and as you can tell, it's raining, so I'm pretty sure we're not gonna be able to go today, but at least the combine's sitting ready to go for later today or tomorrow, whenever, uh, whenever the customer's ready to go. Sun came out and we are headed to the field for the first part of corn for this machine. A little bit late to the, uh, to the party here, just because um, we've been doing so many soybeans late down towards uh, uh, Wyoming and sort of that direction, but uh, we're back just west of London at a, a customers here that um, has worked with Advantage a lot. Um, he was really awesome to, to let me use a little bit of his field to sort of get this thing set up for the first time. It's the, it'll be the first one that we've run this year, and then he's obviously going to get to use it for a little bit more this afternoon to, to see how things go here. But uh, we are doing corn. Okay, so we've got a Gehringhoff folding corn head on this one. So the way to get it unfolded is we go over to the Gehringhoff screen and we hit the unfold button. And then down on our console here, we've got an auxiliary button. We're gonna use aux one, and that's going to fold the head out. And it seems to be extremely quick going out and a little bit slower coming in. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that one yet, but we'll get it figured out. <clears throat> I'm 
the snouts will go down. And then we have to wait until we see a lock button on here. There's a pin that goes in and locks the frame in so that it's not flexing. There we go. So then we're going to open the deck plates up. I think we're going to go for probably around four to start. Let's see what we get with this corn. So this is twin row corn. So we've got to be able to handle in uh, stocks coming in from both sides to be able to, to do this. So, so we'll see what we get here. We're going to start. We are rolling in corn. So there's my settings. We're in some pretty poor corn here. Having a heck of a time getting it set up the way that I want it. But... Uh, we're cruising along at four mile an hour, 90% engine load, chopping. And right now we're in pretty decent stuff for the field. When we get up towards the front, it, uh, it gets less. Um, so right now I've got the feelers running. So you can see down on this row right here, there's actually two blue feelers, and I showed that to you before. They're holding against the two corn rows to do the steering. And then down here on the floor, I've got a foot pedal. That's what I engage it with for this uh, type of ISO system in this, uh, in this setup. So uh, chopping corn head does a really nice job. It's one of the reasons I like this one so much. And I can turn it off when we uh, go to another field that somebody doesn't want that. And I've got head sight uh, height system working in here. And at four, four and a half, five mile an hour, um, it's keeping it right where it's right where it's at. I've got it about an inch, inch and a half off the ground just to, to be down low because these cobs are so low once I get into the, the crappier corn coming up. So we did uh, about 15 acres at the other field that we were at and uh, sort of got everything calibrated. That was sort of what I wanted to do um, with their scale on the buggy and moisture and everything like that. Um, moved over here. We're gonna do a little bit here just until uh, the customer is able to come and run for a bit. And um, yeah, I think they'll take over unless, uh, unless it starts to rain, which it's already tried a little bit here, but uh, it looks like it's given up and it's not gonna be around for, for too long. So hopefully we'll be able to let him be able to keep going for a little bit. Um, so you can see here, now we're getting into the poor stuff. Basically, you can barely get the head in a couple spots low enough to get anything that's there, but there's nothing there. And then the feelers, they just push the, the plant over, so I actually have to take over steering in here because there's just there's nothing there. But we are doing corn, and I'm. This is my favorite time of year. I love doing corn. It's one of my favorite crops. Um, unloading all the time and everything. So I'll get some more footage of uh, unloading here. They've got an old, uh, old 8,000 um, articulator on the on the buggy, which is pretty cool. And uh, yeah, I'll get some footage of that so you can see it too. So here's Joystick doing headlands. And as long as you just move it a little bit and be really fine with it, it can follow rows, no problem at all. Everybody, it is Tuesday. We had a really good run with the combine yesterday, getting it set up at uh, that customer's place. They ended up running it a little bit more last night. I left around six or six thirty, and uh, I'm headed back that way this morning to grab it. 
but I'm still trying to figure out where I'm going. I uh, texted like five people yesterday about uh, demoing today and no one's returning my calls. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of a, a binge here this morning to see if uh, I can get somebody that wants to run it. Um, we're getting to that time of the year where the weather is a little up and down. People just want to get stuff done. So I understand what they're, uh, why they're a little bit hesitant about having us come. Um, usually when the combine's fully set up and you just walk in and they start combining, it, uh, it usually isn't too bad of a, a thing. But uh, for right now anyways, it's just, it's been a struggle. So I'll make some phone calls here. Um, I'm going to stop and get some fuel, run to the office quick, and then uh, see where we're going. Rolling again. We're in a really small field uh, with a lot of rounded headlands and stuff and they, uh, they're quite enjoying the short snouts on the gearing off head and the joystick steer. So I'd asked in the last video uh, how people were doing for getting uh, crop done and everything like that. And we had some people respond, so that's great. Um, this one, uh, so what's your favorite combine? What color, what color do you like the most, even if you don't run it? Massey, Gleaner, Lexian, Case, John Deere, Ideal. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite combine is. So it's peeling these cobs off really nice. If I go behind a track mark. We're in here. So I go behind the tracks because uh, anything that it's come off the head gets smushed into the ground. Anything that's actual loss off the combine is, is, uh, is left on the top. So there's one kernel. That's smushed in. I'd say we're about one. One per square foot there. And then the other place to look is um, in the next Passover. Typically the chopper will spray corn into the next pass and that's another place to, to look. There's one. That's about it, just the one there. So I'd say that this is dialed in pretty good. Um, I'm running about 400 on the rotor, uh, about 0.7 of an inch on the concave. Got 0.6 and 0.6 on my top and bottom sibs and the fans running around 90, 50, 960. So doing a pretty good job for for getting it set up in some better corn here today. Yesterday was really hard. It was in, it was everything from zero to 120. It just didn't, uh, it was, it made it really difficult to set it up. So this is a little easier here today. So that's good. So they're running, they're running uh, four and a half mile an hour, 12 row chopping corn head, 160-ish bushel corn here. Um, their unit, non-chopping, they're running about four is what the operator said uh, with a 12 row non-chop head. So I'm pretty happy with how this is going here. It's, uh, I, 
I didn't know what to expect with the Fenton corn. I really didn't. Um, I've heard good things, I've heard some bad things, but overall I'm extremely impressed with what it's doing. It's got capacity, the sample is perfect, I'm not getting any losses. Um, was trying to play with the, the settings a little bit there, I was maybe grinding just a little bit, but we ended up opening the concave up and slowing the cylinder down, or the rotor down just a little bit. And uh, it seems to have cleared it all up now, so yeah, it's, uh, she's performing, this thing will eat corn. Okay, so a little bit of a learning experience here. New combine, customers new to running it, runs a, a green one, and um, the buggy driver was saying that there's a, a ton of corn on the ground when he's, uh, he's checking stuff out. So I got out and looked, and you can see there's an absolute ton coming through here. So, question is why? When you go over and look in the, the next pass, and it's littered with corn. So the question is why? Well, we'd been running in some really crappy corn, 120, 130 bushel corn, and I had the bottom sieves set up about a half an inch each to be able to try and keep some of the cob out of the sample. There wasn't a lot of material coming through from corn, so it was falling through the sieves and getting up into the clean grain system. Well, we're into 220 bushel corn now, so what we ended up having to do is just open the sieves up. So now I'm at three quarters of an inch on the top, three quarters of an inch on the bottom. We turned the fan speed up about 100 RPM, so we're at about 1050, and uh, it cleared everything up. So now, if you look at a pass that he just did, which is right here, We've gone back to no corn on the ground. So settings changes. That's how quick this can change, just going from headlands with crappy corn on it to really good corn down the middle of the field. We've got to be watching that, and that's why I do so many loss checks and equate what we've got to what the loss monitor is doing in the cab. He told me that the, the sensors were starting to jump a little bit more, which means we're getting more loss and we had to make some more adjustments to be able to get it to work. So good for the buggy driver to keep, uh, keep an eye on things. And uh, yeah, we got it fixed within a couple hundred feet of doing it, so it worked out good. Had two really good days uh, getting this combine started up with corn. Uh, these guys are just gonna make another strike through here, and then I think they're pretty much done for the day. They, uh, uh, they've run out of driver space, so they might get another bin load on the combine, but that's sort of gonna be it. Um, but yeah, we've had a great day getting things set up in some crappy corn. We got in some really good corn here in this field, so it's, uh, it's a little bit nicer to get it set up properly here. As I showed you, we had to make some settings changes there because of the, the conditions that we were fighting with. So that happens too on these demos, but as long as we know what to do and we can correct it, that's uh, half the battle. So anyways, I hope, uh, hope you've enjoyed these videos today. Um, if there's any questions or comments, by all means, let me know. Happy to answer them for you. Uh, yeah, and on that, we'll, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching.